Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Rise and Shine Gaming with me, your host, Corky, here on the Corky's World Channel. Uh, morning, guys. How's it going? Hope, hope your night was good. I hope your day is going to be great. We are here today playing one of the best survival horror games of all time, let alone this generation. Don't starve. And we're playing the Giant Edition, which is the one that got ported to consoles. Uh, the Giant Edition means you play with the Rise of Giants expansion, which sends terrible, horrible monsters uh, tearing through your wasteland. Let's play. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to start a new slot because I don't even know what that one is. We're going to turn off Rise of Giants because I am garbage at this game. As you will, as you will all see. <laughs> all right, generating world. Uh, I wish I had some. I wish I had some history I could whip out really quick about this game. All I know is, I've watched a few YouTubers play it. I've watched a few people play it, and then you know, I got so interested in myself that I, I went. You know, when it when it went on sale on Xbox Live. Say, pal, you don't look so good. You'd better find something to eat before night comes. All right, I got a, I got a little, uh, I got a little history here for you. So, developer is uh, Cly Entertainment, and the composers are Vince Devera and Jason Garner. It's been ported across everything. It's on phone. It's on all. It's on Wii U for Christ's sake. Okay, so Don't Starve is 2013, so it's actually three years old. Uh, adventure video game with survival and roguelike elements developed and published by the Canadian Indian company Clay Entertainment. Or Clay or Clee, I don't know how I'm supposed to say that. So it was, re uh, it was released originally on Steam, got a PS4 port, got an Xbox One port, iOS, Pocket Edition, you know. Uh, the game follows a scientist named Wins Wilson who finds himself in a dark, dreary world and must survive as long as possible. Towards this end, the player must keep Winston, uh, I keep saying Winston, Wilson healthy, fed, and mentally stable as he avoids a variety of surreal and supernatural enemies that will try to kill and devour him. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much all you need to know. We're Wilson right there, and then this is our world. So we're going to pick some flowers, because picking flowers helps with mental stability. And we're going to need some grass. It's a... Uh, this is definitely a Rise and Shine game because I haven't played it in my usual my usual MO as far as games go is I'll get the game and I will play it furiously for a few weeks and then drop it immediately and never go back to it. And if I do go back to it, it is several months, if not a year or so later. So it's been months since I've played this, so Rather than, you know, have a long, drawn-out series of me remembering how to play this game, I could... I took it upon myself to just turn it into a Rise and Shine gaming so I can show you guys a little something about it. You know, you could see me craft some things, we'll run into a few monsters, and then you can either let me know if you want me to turn this into a series, which I will happily do, or you guys can go out and get it yourself. And one of the things that drove me to get this myself was I believe I was watching Markiplier play it and just thinking, this doesn't look that hard. He's having such a difficult time with something that looks so simple. And I was completely wrong. You know, I'll be the first to admit that I was as wrong as could be. This game is difficult as crap. And if you don't get your ducks in order pretty much right out the gate, survival is slim to none. So... As you can see, I'm just picking up random uh, random items, it seems. But, you know, the grass, the twigs that you get off saplings, the flint stones, and then some basic food, those should always be your first go-tos. I'm sure you've seen the birds, a few rabbits are running around, bugs. I have yet to get to a point in this game where catching rabbits is... Or not rabbits, but birds is a possibility. I've I've crafted the rabbit cage and I got that to work for me. Okay. So we've got we've got it seems like enough things. So to craft items you hit the left trigger on on the uh, council mode, and then we'll craft an axe. And now we have an axe. 
So now we can attack and chop down trees. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So pine cones have the ability to be planted and then sprout new trees. So all we're doing right now is just collecting materials for us to get through our first night. So wood, food, a little food. Like I said, the straw, the twigs, the flint. It'd be great if I had some more rocks, but we haven't really passed any. And as you can see, uh, as I'm chopping things down, the integrity of my axe is going down. So we started at 100, and now it's at 60. So in true, you know, survival fashion, weapons don't last forever, you know. You gotta pick and choose your battles and make the best with what you have. Five. At one point, I had been so into this game that I had all the tree sizes down and I know how many chops it would take and I knew how much percentage of an axe it would use up. Those, that, those days are far behind. <laughs> so you're Wilson, and uh, a cool thing about this game is uh, as you as you play, the longer you survive, you rack up experience points. The experience points go into a bank, and then the bank unlocks different characters to play as. You know, the longer you survive, the more experience you get. The more experience you get, the more characters you have. Okay, so here's how we're going to get some rocks. We're going to craft a pickaxe, and then to equip it, So now, so now we can mine these boulders for rocks. And I'm sure you might be wondering, why do we need rocks? And I will show you the second it gets dark. But we're finding some gold, which also helps for creating items. So the rocks that have gold streaks in them, 9 times out of 10 will have gold in them. Every time, every now and then, you'll find one that doesn't, and it was just kind of like a, ah, gotcha. This looks like a good enough place to rest. We're a little close to a cemetery for my liking, but. So, what you can do in, uh, here we go. Oh, crap, that's a tall bird. I don't want anything to do with that. All right, so now it's dark. The longer you stay alone in the dark. Ah, crap. So, there's our first... Oh, God. Tall birds are horrifying. Nope. Not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, equip that axe. And we'll, we'll try and fight this sucker. And we died. <laughs> so, we survived zero days. We get... For some reason, we got that much expansion. And you'll see there, my next reward is another character. I've unlocked the Fire Starter and the Strong Man. The Fire Starter is immune to fire damage, which is pretty cool. And she comes with a lighter. The Strong Man... Oh, I think I meant retry. I think I hit menu. The Strong Man is strong and can take down trees, enemies, much better. So, here we go. New game. I'll actually... So see, I have the fire starter, Willow, and then the strongman Wolfgang. He gets stronger with the full belly, but he is afraid of the dark and monsters. She lights fires when she's nervous, which can, which when you're, you know, I'll I'll say as Wilson, when you're immune to fire damage, lighting fires when you're nervous isn't as big a deal as when you're not. So we'll give you this. We'll give this another run. As I've said before in previous episodes, the whole point of Rise and Shine Gaming is to give you guys a glimpse into some cool games you might not know about. Or some games you know about that I just don't feel will make good series. Like th I'm sure we could turn this into a decent enough series if I snipped and edited to make myself look a little better. But So we'll get going with the collection. <gasps> Ugh. Don't know if I asked you guys yet, but uh, how's your night? How's your day? 
Hope you guys are doing all right. I know I didn't say it in the last episode, but find me on any social media. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Let me know how you guys are doing. We're we're not getting that was my bad in the last in the last life. I'll take full responsibility. I saw that tall bird and instead of running in the opposite direction, I was just like, yeah, let's just set up camp here and hope for the best when I should have just been like, oh, I need to make a torch and run the hell away. So that's that's one of the rabbits. What you do is you build the the trap and then put a carrot in it or cooked carrots and then you can walk away and come back and usually the rabbit will be trapped in there and then you can kill it and take the meat. I know people have done runs of this game where they do like vegetarian run where they don't kill animals and blah blah blah. Which is fine. That's a cool. That's a cool uh, way to play. Kind of like stick to your conviction as it was. I have yet to do that. If I have the chance to take down an animal, I take it down. I've got a good bit of food so far, so we'll be doing good on that front. There's a a beehive. If you if you're good enough and you manage to take it down, the best way to do it is lighting it on fire. I think. Then you can get the honey from inside, and honey is a good food source. What uh, what surprised me so much at first was how little food like how little food lasts. You know, like you can see up in the top right hand corner, that's your bar. So it's slowly dwindling as we go. And I thought like, oh, I've got two carrots and some seeds. That'll probably be enough to get me back from an empty stomach. And it's like, it got me maybe a tenth up instead of all the way up like I had expected. Because I was like, Wilson's a tiny guy. How much food could he possibly need? Turns out a lot. So like I said, the first part of your day should be collecting the basics. Flint, sticks food, straw. When sun goes down, good time to, or when it starts to set to, who the hell? When it starts to set towards, <laughs> sorry about that, who the hell? I saw something pop on my phone and I don't know, it's something I'll investigate after this episode. Nothing I need to bother you guys with. So... What else? What was I saying? When it gets to the sun starting to go down, that's a good time to start chopping wood, finding rocks if you can. Rocks help you build the more stable campsite because if you build a campsite and fall asleep and it's not one that's surrounded by rocks, you run the high risk of... Alright, it's time to start chopping down some trees. You run the risk of burning everything down around you. I always forget to that once you're crafting when you're crafting something you can't move you can't hit buttons otherwise it'll stop the whole crafting process so we're going to cut down these big trees get some logs plant some pine cones stop listening stop listening oh my god so no clue why that happens. Feel free to run back the tape, but I don't think I said the word that's supposed to trigger that. But it's been doing that a lot lately. It's probably ghosts in the system whispering. It's probably ghosts in the machine. All right, so we got we got a bit of wood. If we could find some rock patches, that'd be great. But I'm not seeing any. Here's a pond. I'm pretty sure there's a way to craft a fishing pole so you can fish in the ponds. I don't know how to do it. I'm not seeing any rocks. Which is 
not going to be good for old cork. It'll, I mean, it'll be fine as long as we don't make a, fi uh, a campfire around too many trees and shrubs and shit. We'll be all right. In the shopping malls. I, uh, I've had subdivision stuck in my head for a while now, so... So when that randomly comes into an episode, shout out to Rush, shout out to Ninja Sex Party, please don't flag my video for copyrighted content. Alright, it's nighttime, which means the green mushrooms are up. I think you can hold 20 of each, like, certain item. Or maybe it's 40, because we have a pretty good amount of straw there. But then once you have it, it'll just move over to a next slot. And as you can see, those slots are filling up. And once they're full, you either need to drop what you got, or you need to move it on. All right, here we go. Build us a campfire. And the thing with campfires is... Oh, that's how you move the camera around. You know, true to... Nope, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, how do I, uh, there we go. True to life, you know, you have to keep these things going. All right, didn't mean to craft that. Here's a grass suit I'll just make and equip to myself. It just makes you take a little less damage from things. I'm actually going to wrap the episode up here, guys. You know... We could do this forever, and if you guys want me to play some more, let me know. Feel free to comment down below and say, yeah, play some more, don't starve, I want to watch you suck and get torn apart by monsters, which I will, I will gladly do, guys. You know, I'm always happy to film whatever you guys want to see. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for waking up with me to watch these, these games unfold. You know, I think we have a few Rise and Shine games in the bank, and the next you know, you know, uh, split off series is going to be Corky After Dark, where I headphone up and I dim the lights and I try and run through some horror games. The first of which will probably be uh, Layers of Fear because I just picked it up during the Xbox Summer Sale. So, guys, as always, be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I will see you 